And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Museum. I'm very excited. I, I was really pumped about this game for a couple reasons. One, I like the theme. I like the idea of having a museum. I like going to museums and curating a museum. And the other reason is because Vincent Dutrait did the artwork on this game, and I had heard that every single card was a different piece of art, which is very impressive because artwork can be expensive for games, so publishers often cut corners. But here I heard that every piece of art was different. It looks neat. I love the theme. Let's take a look and see if the game is good. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a scoring card, which is going to give you a certain way to score at the end of the game. You're going to pick from some scoring cards, so maybe Chinese Legacy. The more China cards I get, five cards will give me 10 points, 8, 16, 11, 28, et cetera, at the end of the game. So that's one way you're going to score. But the main way you're going to score is by building collections in a museum that you have. So there are multiple museums that are included in the game. And there's, like this is the German Museum, the one from Berlin, and this is the basic one. There are four of these, they all have the same coloring in them, but you can also use these, and they all are fairly balanced as far as I can tell. As the game goes by, you're gonna be putting cards from collections in your museum. You can rearrange these anytime you want, even at the end of the game, right before final scoring. And you're gonna be trying to put cards in the same collection that are the same color. So this gray color, for example, is Greek, so having cards next to each other the same color, even if they bend and go around a corner, so if I have gray, 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 this is all together. And you're also looking for cards with these symbols in the corner here, the domains. And so I might have a bunch of grays that go around like this, and then maybe there's a domain here, and there's a group of those connected too. And at the end of the game, you're going to score based on this victory points table here, you're going to take a look at each of the different color civilizations, and there's 12 different colors, and if you have at least three cards next to each other, you'll get points. And then the same thing with the different domains. There are six different domains. So when we look at the board, there are four different sections on the board. There's America Pacific, Europe, Africa, Middle East, and Asia. And each of these has three different colors in it and has a certain number of domains that are in there. And in fact, your reference card will show you there are different domains amongst the colors although um, all the different domains are represented in each of the decks. There are two cards available for players to uh, see, and there's a face-down deck for each person. On a player's turn, the first thing is you must take one of these cards and add it to your hand. You can pick any card on the board. Each other player then may take a card, but if they do take a card, then you are going to get one of these tokens, which you'll add to a pile that you have in front of you. These prestige tokens that you'll be collecting as the game goes by can be used as a bit of a currency. Now players are going to start with some of the cards from each of the deck in their hand. They'll also start with these special cards. You can play one of these special cards on your turn and do various things. Like here I can place an object card between one and four from any of the common pools, discards into your museum for free. I could play that my turn and do it. Now what you're trying to do is you're trying to score points in this game. And on your turn, after you take a card, and everyone else might take a card, but hopefully all the other players do, which will give you lots of prestige points, you can then either furbish your museum, or you can take cards from your common pool, which is another name for your discard pile. When you furbish your museum, you can place any cards in your museum. So let's say I want to put this card in my museum. I would have to pay for it using other cards. So if I have this five here, for example, I could pay this five and put out the, f the four. That seems like a waste, but if I have this one, I can put out both cards for the five. Or I can also pay both of these cards to put out the five. You can do what you want. From, and you're playing cards from your hand. Any cards that you use to pay to put out cards go into your common pool, again, your discard pile, but you kind of spread them out so everyone can see them because you can build cards from other people's common pools, but when you do so, you need to pay them a prestige point. You can build cards from your own common pool, but you can only spend cards for payment from your hand. Whenever you build a card five, which is the highest value, you also will get a free prestige for building that and putting it in your museum. And when you build cards, you are going to get that many points on the board. Every time you reach a multiple of 10, you will draw a special card, and when one person gets to 50, that's gonna trigger the end of the game. 
You can also buy experts here. There's a little board of experts that's on the game, and you simply will pay the cost here and put these experts in your museum. They will simply go in this spot here. Some of the experts give you special abilities, like for example, this one here says when you draw a favor, you can draw two and pick one. And some will give you, like these, give you an extra, basically, card of that domain. Others will give you cards of various colors and things like that. They're just going to give you these. You can add them at the end of the game. Once your turn is finished, you will add cards from each deck to replace the ones that were taken. And it's the next player's turn. Now, every once in a while, a public opinion card will show up. There's cards of these in each deck. When it happens, you'll put a public opinion card on that, a public opinion token on that area. And at the end of the game, any cards that you have in your common pool are going to be worth minus one point for each public opinion token that's there. So they can be negative and you don't want too many cards in your common pool. Therefore, remembering that one of the things you can do in your turn is furbish your museum, which is put stuff in your museum from other people's piles, your own pile, from your hand, etc. Or you can take cards, you can inventory, take as many cards as you want from your comp pool and put them back in your hand. Remembering, of course, that you have a max hand limit of seven at the end of your turn. And so this is just going to keep going around the table. Players are going to do this until we reach 50, at which case the end of the game happens. Now, before the first player goes each round, you will draw a headline card, and these cards will do different things. Maybe recruiting experts cost one. Object cards in Africa and the Middle East are reduced to one, which means there will only be one here. We got symbols that will remind us of that. Sometimes something is completely closed, and you won't be able to buy from that for a round. And that's what these cards are going to do. It's just kind of throw a little bit of a wrinkle into the mix. And that's pretty much the game. At the end of the game, you'll have scored points during the game. Then you'll just take points for your special bonus cards. And for these victory points on here, whoever has the most points is the winner. So it's kind of a long board here, but I really like the look of it. The look of this game is absolutely fantastic. So we'll start with the art. Raving about Vincent Dutrait, he's one of my favorite artists in games. And what's fascinating about this game is that every single art piece in this game is not only historically accurate, but is a unique piece of art. This is really good. And the card quality on these cards is very well done. I really like them. They're all, I mean, it's just, man, I just, while I'm sitting and waiting for other people to go, I'm just looking at the different art. It even has a little bit here of text about the different cards that are in this game. I also like how each of these colors here refers to a different civilization, but it also, like the, here the green ones are the, the Celtic civilization, and the gray ones are the Greek civilization, and the red ones are the Roman. So if you do have a problem differentiating colors, you can just read what the type is there. So that's really neat, you know. So that was uh, the European. Here's the Africa, Middle East. There's the Rosetta Stone. So it's really neat to see all these different items. And this is kind of the best part of this game. I also like how the museums themselves look. I mean, it's not a big deal. They're kind of there just to help you score at the end of the game. But they're, they're kind of thin boards, but I mean, you're just putting things on top of them. So here's Paris, which is the generic museum, and here's the Galleria de Madrid. I should mention at this point, I didn't mention it earlier, that you can score bonus points if you get one collection in the colored area here. Uh, you will score an extra eight points. It has to be one complete collection of color and or domain. If you fill every spot on your board, here you get 14 points. And if you do both these things, you'll score 25. Never seen this done, but I'm assuming it's possible. And the, the point totals are going to be different on the side of the board based on how hard it is to do each of these. Here you can see the color is kind of crisscross, and it's a much bigger board. So this is 12. Well, no, it's a smaller board. There's more space on this side, so this one's 14. So anyway, I liked how the boards look. I like the different tokens that are included with the game. I, they're just neat looking prestige. Overall, very happy with the components of this game. Okay, so that's Museum. Now this game is Set Collection the Game. It's really interesting because you have this museum and you can put stuff in it any way you want. But at the end of the day, you're just putting it there to help yourself keep track of stuff because you can rearrange it anytime you want. And so there's this interesting moment that the game ends and everyone's like, all right, Let's manipulate stuff. Now, it's not as complex. I thought, oh, this is going to take forever. But you only have so many domains at, that can cross colors. Like, you can't cross a color with another color. So colors and domains can cross as you're placing them out. So it's not that complex. And as the game goes by, you're probably collecting a lot of several domains and maybe at one or two colors. And you got to be careful because you're watching what other players do. 
that special scoring card is going to really probably help you focus. Like, oh, this card says collect Egyptian cards. That's what I'm going to do. But wait, you're collecting Egyptian cards too because you just decided to pick that color. And that is the only maybe negative thing about the game is that your special scoring card could be offset if another player just decides to pick whatever you're trying to collect and do it themselves because you're going to do that anyway, right? As I'm going through and when I first start the game out, I'll be like, oh, Roman cards. There's two of them. You know what? I got some. I got a Roman card in my hand. There's one. I'm just going to do Roman cards and your special scoring card is Roman. That can throw that off a bit. The other thing that I would say as a slight negative against the game is that the action cards are very powerful, but they seem slightly around the place. Like, for example, there's one card that when you play it, you get a point for every one of those tokens, those negative tokens on the board, and you can ignore the negative tokens from one spot at the end of the game. That could be a swing of 10, 15 points for you, and it seems much better than some of the other special cards. And then some of the expert cards, like there's one expert card that lets you have, you can only hold three of those special cards in your hand. There's one expert card that lets you hold four. Well, la-di-da, who cares? That doesn't seem as useful as an expert card that gives you something else. Now, this is all minor stuff for me, but those are things I've noticed. What I do like about the game is I like the collection aspect. I like set collection. And honestly, if you like collecting things, this is a game you like. And if it, you're kind of mediocre on that, you probably won't enjoy this because that is what this game is. It is literally collect cards and put them in front of you. Some people might also find it tedious where you take a card and each other person. Will you take a card? No? Yes? No? And at first you're like, I don't want to take cards because why should I take cards? I'm going to give you points if I do so or money, currency to spend. But at the same time, I want to get a card. So on my turn, if I take a card in every other player's turn, I'll have more cards to use. What cards do you take? Well, it usually works like this. The color domain I want, I'll take it. That's not available. Highest number card on the table so I can pay for my cards. But even if someone else takes a card you want to pay with for the cards that they have, you when they spend it in their common pool, you'll be able to get it from them. So I do like that aspect of the game. So overall, I did enjoy this. It's a very singular style game. Collect cards, put them out in front of you. The game is actually simpler than it looks. When you put it out on the table, it's like, wow, this is a big game. No, it's actually a little smaller than that. You are literally just collecting cards and putting them in front of you. But it's something I enjoy. There's no question the artwork helps make this game better. Be that artwork and history. I've seen a lot of these artifacts in museums. I've been to a few places on here. That's neat. Some of these places I'd love to see, and I like that. But if I take that aside, the gameplay itself is still pretty solid. It's very basic. Collect groups of colors, fill your museum, follow the stuff in your special scoring card, a little bit of back and forth as you decide whether to you know, give each other prestige or not, because uh, again, you can use that prestige to augment when you buy or sell cards, and or deal with the minor uh, events and headlines that come about. Very simple game. I don't know how many times it will get played over the course of the year, but I think it's very solid and fun. That's Muzan. Dice Tower Judgment approved.